Hi there and welcome to Van Life Devotions, where in season two we are sharing about ordinary Aussies of faith who have made an impact on many. This here is an Akubra hat, which isn't mine and I would wear it, but I have a rather big head and so this hat is smaller in size and it just wouldn't fit me. I have it because last weekend it was announced that Australia's own Akubra hat brand has been sold. It has been part of an Australian fashion staple for almost 150 years. The Akubra hat came about when in the 1870s a Benjamin Dunkley, a hatter, saw a business opportunity with Australia's rabbit problem. With the increasing population of rabbits and their destructiveness across the farms, Dunkley invented a machine that could remove the fur from rabbit skin and use that fur to make hats. Before then, the job had been done tediously by hand. In the late 1880s, Dunkley moved his business from Tasmania to Sydney to set up a small hat factory in Crown Street, Surrey Hills. Soon to join him was Stephen Kerr. Stephen married Benjamin's daughter Ada in 1905 at the Paddington Methodist Church. Benjamin was so impressed with his son-in-law that he made him general manager and then eventually manager director of Dunkley's Hat Mills. It was during this period that the name Akubra came into use. Akubra is the Aboriginal word for head covering. When Duncanly died in 1925, ownership of the business was transferred to Stephen Kerr and for the next 90 years, the business was owned and led by the Kerr family. Today, I want to pay tribute to Stephen Kerr the first. Stephen led the business from 1925 to his retirement in 1952. The first years were actually quite tough as the Great Depression took its toll. As many of his competitors collapsed, Stephen came up with an idea and took it to his staff for a vote. They voted that all staff to take a 10% pay cut and with that decision, no one was made redundant. The business flourished in the 1940s as the company underwent a period of rapid expansion. They moved to new larger premises in Waterloo and Sydney and staff peaked at 500. This was largely due to a military contract to supply diggers with the Akubra slouch hats. In 1950, Stephen approached the John Stenson Company in America about producing Stenson hats under license in Australia, which took the company to new heights. When Stephen retired in 1952, production was at a record high. Journalist Margaret Stevens wrote in the Australian Dictionary of Biography that Stephen was a pillar and a trustee of Burwood Methodist Church who absolutely delighted in worshipping God through him singing. Faith was important to Stephen, who according to Margaret Stevens, ran his business according to Christian principles. I wonder if his idea of the 10% pay cut across all staff to save jobs came from the biblical principle of giving to God 10% of what we earn. He established the Akubra cricket team, which was enjoyed by many. In addition to an annual picnic, a dinner for employees was held every year, which included a band singing and dancing. More practically, a provident society made generous allowance for employees' sickness benefits. Staff who enlisted during World War II had their military pay argumented by the firm to preserve their normal wage level. Stephen Kerr also developed the company as a family business. Each succeeding generation has had to spend considerable time learning the craft. 
according to the company secretary, Roy Wilkinson, that it was important to understand the manufacturer of a fur felt hat is an actual craft. Hence why each generation of Kerr family had to work at each point in the manufacturing process. Now this could take up to two years before they then moved into the office to understand all the different aspects of management. Probably the success of Akubra is in part due to the commitment of the Kerr family to quality, to their staff, but also to their customers. Over the years, the Akubra brand has been worn from our diggers to Olympians, royalty, the famous, and in movies. It is estimated that over 20 million hats have been made, each one taking around six weeks using the same process that Stephen Kerr the first used over 100 years ago. Times do change, and last week's announcement by Stephen Kerr IV that mining magnates Andrew and Nicola Forrest have acquired a Cubra after 147 years of his family's ownership was a hard decision for the family. But they know it is the right decision as it remains in Australia's hands, poised for the next chapter for this iconic Aussie brand. There's something about running a business along biblical principles. My father-in-law and his brother took over a business from their father when he retired and witnessed continual growth over the next 50 plus years through the hard, but also through the good times. He taught me the biblical principle from 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 30. Those who honor me, I will honor. It is a principle to be applied by those who own and run a business and for all who follow the Lord. Would you please pray with me? Heavenly Father, thank you for businesses that seek to honour you by looking after their staff and customers. Thank you for the promise that you honour those who honour you. In our workplaces, on the sporting field, at school, and in our homes. Help us to honour you. O oh God, preserve us who travel. Surround us with your loving care. Protect us from every danger and bring us in safety to our journey's end. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, Amen. Thanks very much for listening to Van Life Devotions. Please check out vanlifedevotions.com for more information for video podcasts and sermons and other resources there for you. Thanks for listening. Have a great day.